1996, January 23rd, the scientists announced they discovered human body have two brains at that time. I remember that's already almost 10 years ago, eight years ago announced it. So far, the scientists already confirmed the spinal cord has a memory. Not only that, the entire body, every cell has its own memory. Every cell has an individual life. Every cell includes all the DNA information. It's a blueprint of your entire body. I can take one of your cells, I can crown another you. You know how small the cell is? You think about that. From the Western understanding, every 24 hours, one trillion cell die in the body. One trillion. In the, that's how small it is. Remember, in this body, there are so many lives, depends on you. Every cell has its own individual life. You know the skin cell is 28 days. Then it dies. The some part of the body actually live only two hours, three hours. They here to replace. Some live longer than that. So different part of the body have a different lifetimes. Okay. Now, scientists discover we have two brains. It's very important for anyone to understand this concept in order for you to understand the embryonic breathing. We talk about internal elixir. Later we're gonna inter explain what's the internal elixir and external elixir. Important thing, this brain, they call upper brain. This one they call second brain. This brain, two brain connected by spinal cord. This brain think. This man have a memory. That means this brain store the data. This brain store the charge. Ha! Now, there's a Western discovery in 1996. And when you look at 2,000 years ago, Chinese talk about this. Chinese talk about this called Lower Dantian. Dantian, that means where the energy can be produced. Dan, that's mean elixir. Elixir, that's mean qi. Tian, it means field. Chinese already talk about this place can produce the qi and store the qi. Today, they call about second brain. This one, first brain. This one, think. This one, Chinese call upper dan tian. Chinese say upper dan tian related to your spiritual life. Lower dan tian related to your physical life. Because this one provides you the chi, this one it control the chi manifestation. This one direct the chi because it's thinking. That means what? That means this one give you delta V. This one supply you what? The I. The current. Amazing. Chinese also define this one. The spinal cord Chinese called thrusting vessel. Chong Mai, what's the thrusting mean to you? That means <laughs> go through so quick. Remember the name thrusting vessel was given 2,000 years ago. That means Chinese at that time already know these two Dan Tian or two brains connected by spinal cord. But spinal cord, remember, is highly electric conductive tissue. There's no resistance. That's a Western society, amazing. They say these are two brains. In function, it's one. Physically, there are two. Because they synchronize each other, because there's no resistance. So there are two, no, it's one. But it's one, no, there are two. We understand the concept. So Chinese already talk about these two, one in, one yang. Because in and yang cannot be separated. It's like a two polarity of a magnet, cannot separate it. They correspond to each other. So there are two, no, there are one. That's an yin-yang concept. Yin and yang cannot be existing alone. Like you drive, right? A lot of people don't understand this concept. When you drive, this is a steering wheel, this is a road. Where's your mind? Your mind here or your mind there? There are two spots. 
but actually it's one because here is there, there is here. So the yin-yang concept, so you cannot separate them because we can talk about this one more about this yin-yang concept later. Okay. So from here you can see this one give you delta v, this one give you i. Now this mind is so powerful. Now you know Ohm's law. Yeah, in the future, we will talk more about this because now it's because only less than one. I just give you very brief introductions. Ohm's law delta V equals to IR. R is resistance. I is current. Delta V is this. Whole idea, I want to increase delta I, the current. That means delta V has to be increased. As simple as that, right? Okay, how can I increase delta V? That's become a key point in ancient time now. Because when this delta V increase, that means my energy circulates strongly. See? You can talk to some doctors, they can tell you it's very amazing. Two persons, exactly the same case, they're dying. Both of them doctors say, oh, I give up, both of them give up. Amazing, three months later, this one survived, this dead. What's the difference? You talk to them because this one, the mind of surviving is so strong. I want to leave. I don't give up. If you don't give up, now you survive. It's mine. The power of the mind. Remember only a few months ago, Japanese and medical science, they announced it. They announced what? It's amazing. The conclusion, through thinking alone, you can lose your weight. Through thinking, you can build up your muscle. Through thinking, you can get sick. Through thinking, you can heal yourself. Question, if you go to the church, as long as you believe the power of the God, through the praying, you can heal yourself. But you don't believe, it won't work. Because psychologically, prayer is an important role of the whole thing. The same thing for the chi healers. As long as you believe the power of the chi healer, actually 50% of healing comes from yourself. You don't believe it, you're going to reject it. So, this is the power of the mind. This mind is so important because mind controls entire body's function. So, because the reason you have to understand, this is the most powerful one. But this one, how do I increase the other become the key now? People say, concentration. Okay, how do I improve concentration? How? It's very, very important, huh? How do I increase? What is the concentration? That means come in very important part. A lot of you probably already guessed this meditation. Aha, this one come in now, meditation. All right, now from here, I want to you think a little bit further for this part. In the future, maybe we we'll talk again. Uh, it's very important for you to, to think now. The brain. The brain constructed by two hemispheres. This is the front side of the brain, this is your third eyes. The side way you look at the brain is uh, like this structure. Okay? This is where picture of the grand pineal glands. Okay. We have a picture in the slide that you take a look at the brain. From this slide you're gonna see the structure of the brain, but you see only half of them. Because between this, this is half, the other half on the other on this side. So if you look at here, there's a in the center, there's a this a center area. Okay. So from here, this you can see this is a spinal cord. Actually, this you can see the pineal gland, pituitary gland here. Pineal gland, pituitary gland on this area. This is a front size. So from the brain structure, you can easily see this is third eyes, and this is front. Remember, in 1960s. The scientists discover an important thing. The important thing is that uh, the brain and the brain communicate with each other. Because uh, at that time they discover, for example, a lot of twins. The twins, amazing, you can separate them far apart. You can punch one person, the other person say, ouch. That means the brain communicate. They discover this kind of phenomenon also existing between mother and children often. Because this reason they start understand, they start researching about the brain, they realize the brain have a brain wave. 
is amazing is that these two hemispheres in the center actually is, is empty. When it's empty, the energy trapped there. When the energy trapped here, it becomes generally like an energy chamber. So this energy chamber produces resonance. So that means every brain can be acting like a radio station. In another brain, as long as you tune in to the right frequency, you can receive the information. Actually, animals have that capability. Humans have that capability. It's a way of a telepathy. Communicate with each other. The question is how do we tune to each other? We lack of this practice for a long time already. But eventually this exists. So there's a reason in 1960 they generated a machine called EEG. That's a long word I cannot remember because my Chinglish is so bad. <laughs> so in this machine, he start realize, remember this place in Chinese is called spiritual valley. If you look at Tao Te Ching chapter 16, they talk about spiritual valley because they talk about spirit reside in this area. Remember, Tao Te Ching was written 2400 years ago. It's already so much ahead of the Western science to understand then not only that, they recognize the spirit reside in this valley. And this one corresponds, this one echo with the nature. That's why a lot of animals still can feel the nature energy change, but humans cannot already. Because it comes from this one. This is very important if you understand embryonic breathing. From these machines, they test the body's function, the brain's thinking. Okay, I just give you very rough. You can see it's in the book, or you can even check it in the EEG, the testing result. There's alpha wave, beta, theta, and delta. Amazing. When you are awake, the situation you are now, you can see this inside is 18 peak. That's me. Frequency is 18. Past your brain. That's me. You are wide awake now. It's amazing. That means a lot of distortions. This one called amplitude. The intensity of the wave proportional to amplitude square. You learn physics, you understand that. That means this amplitude is not a big. Okay, now when you go to alpha, this means you can become relaxed. When you start relax, you will realize the same one second. This one goes to 9 to 12. Nine to twelve. That's mean you can see frequency going down. You can see amplitude increased. That's mean once you relax, you can concentrate better. That's mean your thinking is more powerful. I don't know if you have that experience. The more you get nervous, the worse your concentration is. That's why you have to relax. Once you get relaxed, the third stage theta. When you go to theta, amazing. This one go to five to seven. On 5 to 7, you can see amplitude even increase. This one called drowsy state. That means semi-sleeping state. I don't know if you have that feeling. Sometimes before you get sleep or die right after you wake up, look at you're sleeping, you're not sleeping, but you're not sleeping, but you're sleeping. Your conscious mind is still there, but at the same time, you're in sleeping. That's the state. It's powerful. It's 5 to 7. That's when you can see concentration is much, much higher than all the other two. The same time, amplitude even increased much higher. Now, a lot of you will wonder, what is delta? Delta, this one you can see, is one to two. This one is sleeping state. Okay, that one, when you are in sleeping state, unfortunately, your mind is not there to direct, to control. That means the general is not there to control the body's function. But in the meditation, which one you want? You want better? Of course not. So you have to relax first. That's become a very important part of a meditation. How do you, how do you lead your body's energy or body situation from this state to this state? After that, go to this state. That's why you have to relax first. That's why in Chinese talk about how do you lead this one to this state? Because you have to conquer or you have to control your emotional mind. Emotional mind, like a monkey. How you tame the monkey? You need banana. Yeah. What's a banana? Chinese talk about breathing. So breathing is banana. So that means in the night time you cannot sleep because that's the way they measure for the sleeping state. 
So in order for you to sleep, a lot of people just might get disturbed. As long as you concentrate with the deep breathing, by no time you fall asleep. Okay, so the breathing is banana. So from here, I need you to stay. This is the state you want. It's a theta. That's why in the, in the embryonic breathing, all the meditation, they want to ask, they ask you to reach the state called semi-sleeping state. That's why in the Tao Te Ching say, you are there, you are not there. You are not there, but you are there. In that kind of state, your subconscious mind awakening. Your conscious mind sees down activities. That's the time you can sense about energy. This is the same state as the hypnosis. You know, from the science, scientists today, they prove that when people have been hypnotized, they can sense, they can understand a lot of things when they are awake, they cannot understand. Because the mind is the highly concentrated state. But again, they want control by outside, not by themselves. But for meditation, no, you control yourself. Okay. Can you reach that state? That's a very important concept. So because reason you can see the mind is so powerful, can you develop this mind? Again, how much we understand the mind? Remember year 2000, we decode the human genetic code. It's 100% decoded now. We can change the body structure because you know body's blueprint. But even though the scientists recognize one fact, the fact how much we understand the brain function. What they said? 30%? No, even 12%. If a scientist recognize we understand only 12% of brain function, even we already decode the genetic code, because remember, that's a physical. But it's function. There's function how you interpret. How scientists interpret, we call spirit. One way they accept is the existence of a spirit. The other way they deny it. It's very funny. That's because we, it's unknown. Because we have not break through that barrier yet. Enter called spiritual science. All the spiritual science all come in a mystery. It's all origin from religion's belief in the past. Can science interpret that we call spirit? So this mind, so far, we don't know. How much we know, we don't know. That's why the Taoist, the Tao Te Ching, I don't know how many we read Tao Te Ching, What's the first chapter, the first sentence? They say, the Tao, when you talk about it, it's not Tao anymore. Because once you talk about it, remember Tao is a nature. It's all the nature existing. When you talk about it, it's use human mind to interpret the Tao. How can this mind interpret the Tao, the great nature? We understand even our brain function, only 12%. How can you understand the great nature? No, there are many things we cannot interpret, we cannot understand yet. Because there's a reason they say, Tao ke Tao, Fei Chang Tao. That means those Tao you can talk about is no more Tao. Think about it. Like what do you think? This brain. Once you're born, your mind still connect with nature. Then once you're born, then you start understanding the environment. You've been educated, or what we call brainwashed. You've been brainwashed, this is called white, this is called black. The nature doesn't define that. Nature doesn't tell you this is white, this is black. It's a human, we define that. We start brainwashing people, what's called sadness, what's called happiness, what's the love, what's the hate, what's the dignity, what's the glory. How many people die in the glory? How many people die because of dignity? Because we create it. We create the entire human matrix. Then we struggle inside emotionally. And slowly we separate from the Tao, from the nature. In this case, how can we use this metric mind to judge nature? You can't. That's why the Tao Te Ching, first chapter, first sentence, they say, Tao, when you talk about, it's not more Tao, it's not Tao. Those can be named, it's not real name. Because they don't give you a name. It's we define the name. See, that's become human society because we are away from the Tao. So because the reason this mind is a mystery, we still don't know yet. 